Hi, everybody, and welcome to TensorFlow Meets. I'm absolutely delighted to have my colleague, Ed Wilder-James, here with me today. Now, Ed is Mr. Community, and TensorFlow is all about community. So, Ed, can you tell us a little bit about what you've been up to? Yeah, sure. I have a great job, which is I, I kind of get to reach out uh, to the whole community that's working with TensorFlow. And um, one of the most striking things about TensorFlow is obviously so many places it's used and so many areas. And uh, for TensorFlow to continue to be a great project, continue to grow, we need to build it so that the community can easily be part of the thing that we're building because there's so many use cases, you can't just have the core team trying to support them all, right? It needs to be a sustainable community where everyone can help build TensorFlow towards the use cases that they have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, one of the things I find amazing is that, you know, we talk about having a dedication to community, but the proof of dedication to community is that we have you full-time working on it. It's like your <laughs> role, right? It's, uh... It is, and it's a tremendously fun job to be able to kind of help the engineering teams out by doing the other part, right? Designing processes and designing the, the groups and the right. ways in the same way that an API helps you program, right? Some <laughs> yeah. of the structures I, I, I help build help people interact. That's a really interesting analogy. I never thought about it that way. That's pretty cool. So now you did a talk at the TensorFlow Developer Summit around community, mm -hmm. and there was one thing that really jumped out to me in that was that you had a subtitle on your slide that was saying, I think, was it we're building TensorFlow together That's or right. something along those lines. So can you tell us really what it means for us to be building TensorFlow together with the community? Yeah, I think especially in the last year, there are two things that help us work together as a community. Mm -hmm. The first of these is that we started to use an RFC request for comments process for okay. design changes. So a year ago at the point where uh, we just kind of landed design changes in, in code or if somebody right. else wanted to contribute, they just landed a big PR and there's not a lot of transparency or discussion. Uh, but now we've published, I think, over 21 uh, RFCs wow. where new designs for APIs are discussed ahead of time in public. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the discussion, because afterwards that acts as documentation. So someone in the future can come and understand why we made these choices. Interesting. That's one way you build together. Right. The second way is that uh, we've established uh, now six special interest groups. And these are very defined project groups. So they work on things like you know, new networking mm -hmm. uh, protocols or ways to connect TensorFlow to other data sources. And uh, these work together predominantly community-led to build parts of TensorFlow. So now we've like, increased the surface area, increased the transparency and the communication. Wow, great stuff. So one of the things that I always hear with uh, when it's easy to talk about community, it's hard to build community. And one of the things to make building communities to try and make it easy as possible to participate. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been doing lots and lots of great work in that space. Can, can you share a little bit about some of the great things that we have that will help people to participate in the community beyond yeah. what you've already shared? Oh, well, I'll try and be, yeah, there's, there's a lot now. There's a, there is a lot more surface area. Uh, and it really, it's about surface area, right? You walk into a big project like TensorFlow, where do you start, right? Yeah. Where, are the, where are the points you can get traction? So we obviously, I mentioned the, the SIGs that are going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what, the modularity of the code base really matters too. And this right. is one of the things we're doing in TensorFlow 2.0 is making it way more modular, having less in this monolithic core. So now you could find the repo that you want to work on or the, the right. developer who's looking after that. It's a lot more accessible. Right. Uh, in addition to that and code and the SIGs that I mentioned, uh, we now have a community documentation group, which mm -hmm. is gaining steam. People bringing translations on. I've seen the translations. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, amazing. Like, from the community. Last week, we posted up uh, Korean and Russian mm -hmm. translations. And it's fabulous to have first class resources on our website mm -hmm. uh, to those communities. And also, finally, the uh, testing group for TensorFlow 2.0 that the Paige Bailey is leading, mm -hmm. which has really given people hands on um, time to bash on TensorFlow 2.0 and, and help it make sure it meets all those important use cases that everyone has. Wow, there's so much there. And like, are, are there any of the uh, community contributions that you've seen that particularly inspire you, that you really like? Yeah. Well, I think what particularly inspires me is the way that all this is coming together to support TensorFlow 2.0. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, it would not be possible to do 2.0 in the way we're doing without the community. Let me give you an example, right? All the major design changes we've consulted uh, yeah. via RFC. Uh, we now have moved a lot of stuff out of Contrib that was existing yeah. before and is being maintained by community groups, the SIGs. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't have been possible before. Um, and in addition, the TensorFlow 2.0 testing group, which is also powered by a lot of great uh, Google developer experts, mm -hmm. is really kind of 
mashing on the, on the APIs, making sure they work, but also creating uh, examples and notebooks that, that will demo the functionality. Yeah. I mean, one that I particularly like is with uh, TensorFlow data services, the fact that we've been able to have contributions of data sets from the community. And so some of the data sets that have come in, there was one from Stanford, a, a, an undergraduate at Stanford University who contributed like 200,000 chest X-ray images into a data set. And to make that then easy for other people to build training on and say, without good community, how could, you know, I just find it, I find it inspiring. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's, it's one half about, you know, our attitude, but also about what we create and, and structures and also how we code things. Right, right. So, uh, so switch gears for a second. Now, I know you're hard at work on something called TensorFlow World. Yeah. So it's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> so could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, one of the exciting things about TensorFlow now is that it's so widespread. And uh, what we wanted to do was really create an event that would enable everyone in the ecosystem to come together to share and uh, to talk about what they're doing. You know, obviously, Google does some great TensorFlow-oriented uh, events, but they're limited mm -hmm. in capacity. They're, they're quite short. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of the core TensorFlow team presenting outwards. But there's so many things in the world mm -hmm. where TensorFlow is being used uh, that it's really important for us to con continue to grow our ecosystem by having everyone come together. I see, I see. So, so well, let, let me give you an example sure. uh, about uh, some of the things we'll have in there. So it's not just talks, but there will be uh, tutorials. Okay. There'll be training. There'll be chance for uh, software vendors who, who interface with TensorFlow. You know, out in the real world, people keep all their data in databases and clouds and other places right. that we want to tell their story about how they work with TensorFlow too. So it'll really be something for everybody. Mm -hmm. Can I go, please? <laughs> well, let me tell you, let me tell you a good way that you could go. Obviously, we'd love to have everyone come and attend as an attendee. But right now, we have a call for participation open, right. uh, which is open until April 23rd. Okay. And you can go to the website URL, which is very excitingly, tensorflow.world. Okay, I think I can remember You're that. right. That's the clues in the name. Yeah. And uh, submit a proposal to talk or deliver a tutorial. Okay. And uh, we'll be reviewing those. and. By sort of mid-May, we'll have a schedule settled. And where and when is TensorFlow World? Right, the conference itself is October 28th through 31st of October, mm -hmm. and that'll be in Santa Clara. Okay, so, and it's, uh, it's got Halloween. It's Halloween, and TensorFlow loves orange, exactly. so I'm, I'm psyched. Great. Yeah. So are you going to go in fancy dress? <sighs> <laughs> well, thanks so much. Oh, one last question, actually, mm -hmm. is like, um, if people want to learn more about the community, uh, where can they go? You know, we decided that, again, one URL is the best idea. So if you go to tensorflow.org slash community, okay. or just go to the TensorFlow homepage and hit on the community uh, label, you'll get to all our resources. Awesome, awesome. Okay, great. Thanks so much. And thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of TensorFlow Meets. And if you have any questions for Ed or if you have any questions for me, just please leave them in the comments below. And all the links that we discussed today, I'll paste them in there as well. So thanks so much.